Hi everybody, my name is Barry Schwartz and this is the Search Buzz Video Recap. Today is Friday, December 13th, and this is the search news we covered over at the Searches Roundtable at seroundtable.com. First up, Matt Cutts went ahead and nailed another uh, link network. Uh, this one's called Egglorake. He announced this on Twitter, um, uh, I think it was Friday late afternoon, uh, Eastern time. Uh, but Egglorake is one of those places you, you participate in, they get you links and so forth. Um, here is his tweet basically saying there are absolutely no footprints linking the websites together, in quotes, and then he said, oh, Angular Rank, basically his way of saying Google went ahead and uh, took care of it. He also said that it could take a few days to show up in Google Webmaster Tools, um, and that is true because um, a few days later, later in the week, this week at least, on December 11th, uh, we had a bunch of people saying that they actually saw the notifications in their Google Web Action Tools about Angular rank rankings, and here's one of the notifications for one site. And there's some other people who actually posted ranking changes as well. Um, it's hard to know exactly if it's Angular rank or if it's something else, uh, but definitely something is going on with that. Um, interesting on that topic, Yandex, the largest search, Russian search engine, um, specifically said that starting soon in Russia, specifically Moscow, for specific commercial types of queries, only for the all commercial types of queries in Moscow, <coughs> Yandex is going to stop using linkage data. Uh, they're going to remove the link data or the link algorithm component within the algorithm, and they're not going to use links as a factor for rankings, specifically in the Moscow region for commercial queries. Why? Um, the head of web search at Yandex, Alexander, said there are there's a lot of noise around links signals, particularly for commercial queries and especially in Russia. We see a lot of pay links and event, even automated pay links where there is no human action actually involved. There's, the problem with links is that they're frequently off topic and are, effective, are effectively cheating users. So they're basically saying they can't compete with link spammers, whereas Google keep, keeps going after uh, these link networks trying to remove the bad links using algorithms like Penguin as well as humans through manual actions. Google's back cuts the saying, he agrees. <coughs> guest blogging is getting out of hand. Specifically, back cuts said, uh, guest blogging spam is growing in terms of the amount of spam and abuse he's been seeing over the years. Uh, so because of that, he gave a bunch of do's or don'ts actually, specifically around guest blogging. Don't make guest blogging your only link building strategy. Don't send out th thousands of email, mass email requests to guest blog at random sites. Don't use the same article. Um, on two different sites and don't take one article and spin it many different times. He has a video on it over here if you want to take a look. But as you can see, more and more link building strategies that are being abused are also being taken out of, out of, out of it wasn't only for link building and now it's being ruined. Uh, Google uh, Matt Cutts says, um, if you're going to go ahead and disavow, disavow aggressively. In another video that Matt Cutts released, he specifically said, uh, around a site that's been penalized recently, maybe, manually, um, for actions they might have taken between a certain type of date range. Uh, the question was asked specifically around Interfloor and how they had only an 11-day penalty. That being said, Matt specifically said that if you know you're building links in a specific time frame, that's bad, or you hired a SEO company that did it for you, disavow aggressively all the links that you built in that time frame, or most of the links you built in that time frame, but on the, on the domain level. Don't go ahead and be tailor this link, that link, Say all links from this specific website, I don't want to count. All this link talk is getting webmasters scared. Uh, there was one web webmaster who said, I'm scared to even link to a charity site. Should I go follow a link if I'm linking to a charity site? I love this charity. I think they're great. I want to link to them. Uh, so the question is, should you be afraid to link to charity sites? Not necessarily to hurt your own website, but to hurt the charity website. And he wanted to do this specifically for Paul Walker's death. Um, he has, a, he has a great organization, and he wanted to link to that organization from his website, but he didn't want to hurt the charity website, so he's concerned. Big news, Google's Knowledge Graph, the pure informational side of Google that has pure knowledge about information. It's cool, it's very great. Now is testing ads. You can see over here, it's showing dealers nearby. Um, it shows the name, the phone number, the address with the link to directions, and it specifically marks it as an ad. It's very hard to see without the arrow pointing at it, but you can see this is the ad format. It's within the Google Knowledge Graph. Um, 
can't pronounce his name, sorry, but great SEO, great um, ad guy on, on, on search marketing. He uh, found it and he actually posted it on Twitter. So thanks a lot for sharing that with us. Uh, crazy, I'm surprised they're testing it. I know a lot of people aren't, but I'm surprised Google's actually testing ads so soon on the knowledge graph. Google AdSense is now offering custom ad size. You can pretty much do any single ad size you want uh, by going to the create ad system, choosing create a custom ad size, typing your ad size, and you got it. And these are what it looks like. So if the ad size doesn't match properly, they'll put padding around it just to make it work if they don't have an ad size that fits it. And these are some of the guidelines or rules, restrictions around doing custom ad sizes if you want to take a look at that as well. Google also launched a new, a new type of ad format called Plus Post Ads. And Plus Post Ads are basically the reverse of what Facebook ads are doing. They're taking content you have on their social network, on Google Plus, and letting you put that content as an ad on the display network on publisher websites. Uh, so here's a video on how it works. Basically, you can take content, you see the, the, this is basically a Google Plus post over here, and it basically is embedded directly on the publisher's website. So people can actually interact with your ad. Google uh, Structured Data Dashboard has added error reporting, uh, specifically around errors with your item types. Uh, the cool thing about this is that people have complained and they can't figure it out, so now they went ahead and built over time, you can actually see the errors as they increase or decrease, and you can actually drill down to see the specific page issue with that item type and how it's uh, impacting your website. Uh, this is reported at Search Internet, that's reported at Search Internet Roundtable. It's pretty amazing. You do a search for Pearl Necklace, the number one result on Google earlier this week was uh, completely not for safe. Um, for work, not, not for safe, not safe for work result from Urban Dictionary, and obviously this is the holiday season. People are searching for pearl necklace. Um, later on, this morning I actually posted about dining. If you do a search of dining, go to Google Images, you will see some inappropriate images. And I did a whole post about how to actually, uh, how to actually, um, sorry, how to actually uh, go ahead and report offensive images in Google, which has changed several times since I've been covering how to do this. Facebook, this is interesting. So Facebook launched their new, their new algorithm for the newsfeed, uh, specifically around what content it shows users based off of a different algorithm, and it's kind of panda related. Um, they announced this a week or so ago, <coughs> and in an interview with Peter um, from All Things D with a news manager uh, at Facebook, he basically asked them specifically about, this is kind of related to Panda, what you're doing. And he's like, I'm not really that familiar with Panda, but it is, as you described, similar to Panda. And obviously Matt Cutts um, tweeted it saying, I was wondering when, if, when Facebook would do something Panda-like, uh, optimize adding value and stuff like that. Um, I'm not wearing Google Glass. I don't know if I wear, I don't wear Google Glass that often in the office, but when I'm traveling or walking around or whatever it might be, um, driving, I usually wear when I'm mobile, it's a mobile device. Um, so now, finally, I'm able to exchange my Google Glass version one for their upgraded version. So that's why I don't have it with me. I actually mailed it in. It should be at Google's offices or their, wherever they have it, their, their, um, their shipping docks, whatever it might be, um, this morning, and hopefully I'll get it soon. Uh, but basically, I read all the Google version one people who submitted say they want the second version of Google Glass, well, I'm talking fast, I'm sorry, um, will be able to go ahead and uh, exchange it. They have to do it soon. This is me boxing it up and sending it back. Um, and uh, version two is out there. I actually invited, um, I actually invited um, people to actually get Google Glass. I invited another three. Um, if I get more invites, I'll let you know. But uh, I posted in the blog, and only uh, one person or two people, one eligible person, actually said they wanted it. And finally, this is interesting. So I noted at a Google Web Search help thread that an uncle of a child. I guess a baby went ahead and said, "Google's uh, my nephew, uh, my, my niece's first word was Google. Why would a, a baby's first word be Google? Well, because of the phones these days, they have embedded on it. If you say OK Google, it has activates Google Voice Search. So this guy, I guess this uncle of this of, of this baby, kept using OK Google, OK Google, OK Google, and the baby took the guy's phone and said Google, and that was the baby's first word." So it's interesting to see the world we live in where this is happening. It obviously makes sense. It's no longer the first word would be cookie 
or food or, uh, or mommy or daddy. It's Google, which is pretty crazy. Anyway, thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. My name again is Barry Schwartz, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search and Roundtable at SCRoundtable.com over the past week. Today again is Friday, December 13th. Everyone have a great weekend. Bye.